how's it going? So, I've been wanting to make a jet engine for quite some time. So why don't we start off small and make ourselves a pulse jet. Right, not to dilly dally, we'll jump over to the plaza cutter, cut ourselves out some blanks, and have a pulse jet. Just like that. You might be thinking, Finley, you made a mistake, that's a 2D pulse jet, you've missed the mark there. Well, I tell you, we'll weld it together and then we'll inflate it with hydroforming and we'll be left with a 3D pulse jet. Now that saves us from having to try and use a slip roller because I don't have one. So, yeah, that's probably a bit of an issue. Anyway, this whole process is based on Colin Furzer's, where he actually went ahead and has already done this, so huge shout out to the OG. Anyway, we'll weld it up, give it a go and see if we can get the Lockwood design to work. The way a pulse jet works, really roughly, is you have your explosions in your chamber here, the hot exhaust gases go out this end and down this tube. Now by the time it's like halfway, you know, it's fully exhausted, it's now got a low pressure zone inside the combustion chamber which is drawing back in f fresh air as well as the hot exhaust gases. By the time the hot exhaust gases get back into the chamber, fresh air and the fuel has mixed together and that hot air reignites and then that creates your pulse cycle. Right, after the tremendous success I've had so far with this, um, I've decided that it's more appropriate for me to actually make a pulse jet to some more, you know, tested designs rather than whatever this is. Because I obviously can't optimize a design if I can't get it to work. So, yeah, anyway, so we'll put this to the side and remake one and hopefully get it working and then we can move on from there. Yeah. You're probably thinking that was a logical thing to start with, but moving on anyway, let's crack into it. Right, we are at a very important stage and that is the fuel system. Now we need to get the propane to just the tip of the intakes so then the air and fuel thoroughly mix together and the thing just works well, hopefully. Now, getting the right pipe and size, oh, it was a bit of a nightmare and you won't believe what I found. Steel straws are perfect. I'm pretty sure this is exactly the intended you know, purpose for these so we'll just pop them in and hopefully weld it all together. I, um, I have my reservations, they are a bit paper thin. So, if you come back and I've just squirted a bit of you know, gasket sealer on them, don't be surprised. Right, let's give it a go. Right, it is that time where we need to see if it will work. Now I have been procrastinating, uh, dreading this because we haven't had particularly much success so far, so yeah. Anyway, we need to test it out, got it mounted up in the vise inside the shed because I couldn't think of anything safer to do. We've got now a spark plug at the back which is connected up to a coil and a little button. Yeah, it's not very inspiring but uh, I hope it's enough to get this working. Right, 
Let's see if it runs, eh? Moment of truth! excited and happy that it's all worked out fine. Now, it's not perfect though, is it? Because it's not just push to start, so I guess that's the next thing we need to do. Let's optimize this so we can hit a button and this whole thing comes to life and runs. Wouldn't that be cool? We've got it all wired up, we've got our little button, listen. There we go, so we've got air jetting in and spark, so let's turn the gas on and see if it'll just start, eh? Well, we've now got it starting off the push of a button. The next thing to do is see if we can get this to run on liquid fuel. Now if we just ran off the propane, we could tip it upside down and there's technically liquid propane, so liquid fuel. But why don't we just go a step further and get this to run on diesel? Because that would be, yeah, pretty cool. Right, let's see how the heck we're gonna do that. Now if you didn't know any better, you would assume this was done by a lathe just because of the centricity of uh, the whole alignment, eh? No? Hmm, strange. Well, there has been a lot of developments. First of all, this is our diesel tank. We start off with it pressurized, we dump this valve here, forces the diesel through the whole system. Now what's not so cool is it just jets diesel everywhere at a insane flow rate which obviously I can't see a single issue with at all so then I tried adding diesel in through it, the side here which would pressurize everything with the flow of air then you could just drip your diesel on top add into the airflow much finer control we don't have a pressurized tank of diesel didn't work it hydrolocked so then we vented air to the top and then had a regulator through the airflow through the system which meant we had a pressure differential Again, you're getting the idea, didn't work. So, adding some cool factor, why don't we design our own Venturi pump where we could draw our diesel in to the flow of air, atomizing and just having a much more controlled and safer you know, diesel system. The diesel injection system is far from perfect. It, uh, it condenses. So about 60% of the diesel gets mist formed inside the posture, which is fantastic. But about 40% kind of is just these droplets that kind of just go everywhere. Not ideal, so I added the little cones to capture everything because spraying this uh, red hot pulse jet and the surrounding area of diesel is not ideal. I, yeah. Anyway, we've also got our little diesel tank, only 20 mils in there. Um, the hose clamp's really only there in spirit. I can't get it tight enough, but anyway, let's uh, give this a go. Fingers crossed, everything just works and it's perfect. Right.
that a flaming success. Anyway, the liquid fuel made a huge difference. The frequency, the power, the heat, uh, it was it was very much amplified. Now I tested a whole bunch of liquid fuels, uh, diesel, kerosene and engine oil and engine oil was the best by far. It was also the most sketchy and I think that was because of the you know, high viscosity. It didn't, you know, all of it didn't make it into the engine and it kind of just pooled around the very hot positive which is not ideal. Anyway, I didn't actually solely get this running on liquid fuel. I ended up getting the propane down to about 5% while I was running on engine oil, uh, but I ran out of, you know, fuel, so that's not ideal. Now, the reason that it's so hard just to get it running on liquid fuel is because it floods itself. Now, I think this is just an inherent issue with the smaller pulse jets. I think with a larger one, you could just, you know, it's got more forgiveness, whack on that liquid fuel, turn the propane off, and you're just, you're good. With this, it, uh, yeah, a little bit more, a little bit more finesse, which I didn't quite possess, which is, that rhymed. But didn't mean it to. Anyway, didn't quite work. Now, I think you could definitely refine the whole system to get it working. Maybe diesel injectors with a fuel pump or a diesel pump to get that high pressure. Um, but I think, I think we've proved the concept far enough. Yeah, with this monstrosity. Anyway, this is more than just a vice ornament. This is actually going to provide a vital role in my next video. Where this will actually power something involving a cup. Yeah, very ambiguous, isn't it? Hmm. Anyway, if you enjoyed this one, possibly give me a thumbs up and maybe even a subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. And make sure you stay tuned so you can see what I create with this. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one. See ya!